it's hard enough running a business anyway when the main purpose is just to make a profit. How much harder is it when the business not only has to make a profit but also is set up to make a positive impact on society? This morning I'm on my way to Birmingham. I've got a web strategy session to run with one person who's a social entrepreneur and then I've got a meeting the following day with a second one. I'm going to take the opportunity to have a chat with both of them about the pros and cons of doing that and why they chose that particular path. On the plus side, there are no trains that go directly from here to Birmingham, which means that I need to drive, which at least means that my train won't get cancelled. Here we are, a few minutes late because of the traffic, but uh, time to go in and see if I can find Melody for our meeting. <laughs> to be a social enterprise? So I'm actually an accidental social entrepreneur. So I didn't actually choose to set up, a, well, even a business actually. Right. I was working for the National Youth Agency for a couple of years. I was on a two year contract. And then I thought, how can I continue doing what I love? And these things I've built up so much experience in, I, I'm actually not passionate about business per se. I don't think I ever came from like being driven to set up a business. Yeah, yeah. Um, I just love to do what I did. And by that time, when I finished that contract, people were emailing me saying, Melody, can you come and deliver this training? I went and delivered training for women in high security prison. Uh, went and did um, training for young people in Indonesia, did lots of different things that people were paying me to do for my expertise and I was doing this work. So I thought, well, I'll just do that. So I, on Hotmail, I set up this like, this, you know, like an email signature, just like made up a title really for what I felt reflected what I can do. Just did that for a year like that as a sole trader and then turned it into a business once things got growing and then set up the website and grew like that. So it was very, very organic, it came really naturally and business happened to be a process to do that. And as for social enterprise, I mean, everything that we were doing was driven by creating social impact. So the business I realized was always a social enterprise, it was always a social mission for sure. And then it turned into a social enterprise once we stopped and looked at all the things that we're doing. But why? Why was it always a social mission, for sure? I think that's kind of the background that I came from. I mean, th this is the thing about purpose, is that I always felt a sense of purpose. Like, definitely a sense of, like, social justice. I wanted to be part of creating a sense of social justice. Um, I mean, having been born in Iran, and then I went to Sweden, and, and then came to the UK, and I found myself always thinking about different ways of doing things. Like there's no one way of doing things. There's so many different ways and there's so many disparities between rights and how women are treated or how young people have opportunities or education, for example. So um, tell me about the work that you do. So you set up a, you know, what, what is a social enterprise in order to make impact? How do you do that? We do it in a number of ways, but mainly it's all centered around developing people's mindsets and their sense of identity. Like I really think that the central thing that we've learned is that when you develop people's sense of identity and they feel good about who they are and what they can do, and they know what their purpose is, then we're more productive, we're more likely to be able to feel happier and go out there and do the things that are right for our lives. <laughs> stayed with my sister last night got a meeting in Birmingham later on but this this is where I grew up Solihull. Hall got to have a quick look round before you go
So it's the small things that bring back the memories. Behind me is the first pub I ever had a drink in. I may not have been entirely legal age when that happened. So I'm here at the Impact Hub at Digbeth in Birmingham, have a meeting with Ravenel Chambers, who's the entrepreneur behind Be Inspired Films. So this is Ravenel, he does the most amazing films through his company, Be Inspired Films. Absolute huge fan. But you also specifically do these for organisations that are changing the world, social causes and so on. You're yeah. a social enterprise, you're a B Corp. Yeah, yeah. Why, I mean you could just make amazing films and be creatively fulfilled and do all this sort of stuff. Why did you decide to make it a social enterprise? Where did that drive Where come from? Where did it from? come from, yeah. Well, actually, my whole um, driver for all of this is primarily to, to social change. Like, in my career, I've done things that are very commercial, and I've done things that are all the way, you know, in the charity sector, in the public sector. Um, and the thing that's pulled me back again and again, is, that just makes me excited, is kind of doing something that I feel has value to society. Um, and I, that's what gets me excited. I'm also excited about doing that as a business. Right. Because I, uh, throughout my kind of um, career, if you like, have seen how, you know, if it's government funding, it'll be for two or three years, yes. then it will end. Yes. And so this great thing that you're doing in the community, yeah, raising yeah. all those expectations, yeah. gone. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, and so on. So I feel like really excited about how business can, if it's done well, can truly be closer to this idea of sustainable. Right. Because you, if people are paying you to do what you're doing and you're having an impact, yes. perfect. Yes. So. so out of the various projects that you've done as Be Inspired Film, is there anything that stands out as something you're particularly proud of having been involved with? Yeah, um, there's lots of stuff. We've done some really interesting stuff with Railway Children, which is a charity that works in Africa and India. Right. And we went out there and filmed um, some stuff with them. And they work here in the UK too, so they're really looking at um, how to, I guess, um, help street kids but also to working at government level as well and to try and prevent stuff like that yes. so we got we got to do some really interesting storytelling work with them where they it was it was quite creative and I've just recently done been out in India doing my a documentary on you know educating girls this is your tuk-tuk challenge tuk-tuk challenge other things yeah so it was it's essentially going to be a uh, a cause film you know about the issue of educating girls but set in the backdrop of an 1800 kilometer tuk-tuk journey across India <laughs> we, just to make it a bit more interesting of course of course <laughs> the most obvious thing in the world exactly do. so I'm really excited about that because for me it's it's a sort of a, a, a venture into kind of more feature documentary stuff which I've wanted to do for a long time and this is my plunge brilliant well I should look forward yeah. to seeing the outcome of that yeah, yeah. so sometime in 2017 we'll watch out for it so yeah. generally for for a lot of people who have that passion to change things they end up going into the core sector they go into charities or, or other mission driven yeah. uh, non-commercial bodies yeah why do you think it's important or powerful to do it via a business? Well, for me, if, you know, just to touch very briefly on my own story, as a teenager, I wanted to be a stockbroker. Oh, well. <laughs> I, was a, I was a very, very... Uh, very want to be a rock it, it was the 80s stuff. Well, yeah. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. So I really wanted to be like rich and, and all that. And, um, but I took a turn in my career completely, and I ended up you know, working for 10 years internationally in charity sector, in the public sector, like you said. So I did, I did go through that. Yeah. But I'd always had this highly commercial side to me as well. Yes. And they were, they were apparently opposed. I did my MBA research on venture philanthropy, which for me was exciting because it started to bring these two worlds together. Yes. And what I've realized, especially coming now to being a B Corp, is that let's say we've put all the charities and all the social enterprises together they're still like a little tiny marginal group compared to the whole scale of things that are going on in the world. So sure. my realization is until mainstream business starts to change yes. and become part of the solution and become more socially minded and, and sort of you know, be more aware of, of, of the consequences of their actions in the world, yes. then we won't really change at the scale that we need. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's why I'm excited about it. And also, you know, there are you know, people who are doing business are not bad people. They're still people, just like you or I, but maybe they've been, there's been a certain way that it's been done. Yes. But we have to change that. Yes. I mean, yeah. I mean it's an obvious thing, isn't it? You, you will find good people everywhere. You will find bad people everywhere. True. It comes down <laughs> to what you look for, what you expect, and what you think the mission yeah. of the organisation is. Had all my meetings. One last very important thing I've still got to do. 
something that has just been on my mind for the last couple of days while I've been here. Right, I'm here. I'm sure it's here. So my dad was an incredible guy. He raised his family. He believed in family. Blood was thicker than water. I was the black sheep of the family. I was the person who nobody quite understood. I dropped out. I became vegetarian. I did all sorts of things that you weren't supposed to do from a working class family. And he was the one who kept me in it. But he would do anything for anybody. He would go out of his way. He was always on some neighbour's roof fixing tiles or digging gardens for people. Or He didn't have a language to talk about what values were or that he had any kind of mission or anything like that. It was just his instinct. He just wanted to help people. You know, one life. Life is short. So don't waste time. Don't end up regretting that things that you didn't do most of all, have some values in your life. Try and do something. Try and make a difference to people.